quick disclaimer this video is not sponsored it would actually be illegal to get sponsored but like a different story for a different day <laughs> and this is assuming people even think i am relevant enough to get sponsored it's not sponsored all the sites and tools i talk about in this video are things that i have personally used in my short career journey and i think have helped me and also the tips that i share here are things that i have picked up through experience and research in my again short career journey so you know take it in a grain of salt take what works for you yeah that's it end of disclaimer <laughs> enjoy the video bye hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is florence and this is the learn your life crisis now this video will be the second in my career series and today we will be going over my top tips on how to write a good cv so without further ado let's get right into the video tip number one know what a good cv looks like in your industry there's a whole spectrum of what cvs look like in terms of design from the more classic and conservative the very bold and creative and colorful so you need to figure out in your industry what a good CV looks like and where it fits in this spectrum. In fact, sometimes there's fields where a real CV in its literal terms may not be relevant to you. For instance, writers may use their blogs as their CVs. Photographers and other creatives may use their portfolios or social media profiles as their CVs. This video will cater for those who actually need to write a CV in its literal terms. So for you, tip number one would be to discover which template to use. And to know which template to use, you need to figure out where you fit in this spectrum. From the classic and conservative to the bold and colorful and beautiful. <laughs> figure out where you fit and then find a template. In terms of CV templates, these are my top suggestions. There is Microsoft Word. When you use the app itself, you can pick the CV template. There is... Um, Resume now, resume help, CV template, and a few other sites. Actually, let me just show you this site instead of listing them out. <laughs> On Microsoft Word, if you want to view all the resume templates, just go ahead and go to File, New, then Resumes and Cover Letters, and you can see there's a bunch of them to choose from. And they integrate seamlessly with Microsoft Word, so you can edit them very easily. Some come in pairs where you have like the resume and a corresponding cover letter which is nice to have this is more you know creative looking a few more creative looking ones there's some that are sort of in between um, and then there's some which are more conservative than others for instance maybe this you know everything is black and white more conservative so you pick your poison there are a few other sites where you can build your CV online and a quick Google search for free CV templates or a free CV builder would bring up all these things. There's Canva, there's Resume Genius, there's Resume Now, Resume Help and CV Template. Those are a few of my favorites. I'll skim through a few of them and see what approaches they use. On Canva, you just put in your name, click Build a CV and choose the template. There's a few templates to choose from. They try to organize them in, time, in terms of type. Then once you pick the template, you don't need to go pro for this, by the way, so that's okay. Um, yeah, so these things are editable. So for instance, I could change this to bananas. <laughs> um, you could also change the template if you get here and discover you don't want to use that. So you could, you know, place to the different template yeah and then edit this on resume genius you just click build resume now and then you pick the template select template use this template um, and then it just walks you through a few prompts um, where it asks you for your info I'm not gonna go forward with this but eventually it's gonna build the CV with all the things that you put in same thing here you pick a template you say choose a template um, you put in data in your header, experience, you don't have to sign in, um, and you just keep going. 
you keep going you put in your experience your education your skills summary etc then as you can see as you put in all these things like say you are yeah let's just say a cashier and you are working at banana <laughs> Yeah, as you can see, as you put in, it's filling in a template, which is pretty cool. Same thing here. I mean, I don't think I need to keep repeating myself, but you get the point. They all have templates, and then, yeah, yeah same thing. Prompts you for information. This one, I think it's when you just pick the template, then you edit. Yeah, this one, you pick the template, then you edit it. So, for instance, if you select that, um, there's a few versions, a video with an example of how to do it, and then yeah, we just edit this. Tip number two, quantify and highlight impact. Instead of just listing out the tasks that you did in the work experience section, try to quantify and highlight impact, and this makes for a better CV. Let me just demonstrate this with an example right now. So we are looking at how to quantify and highlight impact. Here I have a list of tasks taken at company XYZ and we are going to rephrase task number one in a way that quantifies and highlights impact. So task number one is built bots to automate various manual processes. This could be rephrased to something like um, automated task XYZ, cutting down the turnaround time by more than 60% and increasing the overall accuracy by 50%. So let's go ahead and write that. So as you can see, the difference between this task and this explanation is that first of all, we have quantified. There's 80%, there's 60%. We have quantified what we did. And then we have also highlighted the impact. We not only automated manual processes, but we cut the turnaround time by some percentage and increase the accuracy by some percentage. These things, turnaround time, accuracy, um, customer acquisition, etc., such metrics are what show impact. So you need to show impact and then quantify it. Tip number three, demonstrate soft skills with practical experience. By soft skills, I mean things like leadership skills, collaboration, passion, creativity, um, communication skills, etc. Don't just list these things somewhere in a skilled section and say, leader, team player, <laughs> good communicator. <laughs> that does not help and that's really in your opinion you saying you're a good communicator and just leaving it at that that's just your opinion what you need to do is demonstrate these skills throughout your cv you know like your experiences and and education and, and other tasks that you've done etc demonstrate these soft skills in all these experiences and let the cv talk for itself let me show you an example of how to do this I have this list of soft skills that I'm going to use to demonstrate how to incorporate them into your CV without listing them out explicitly. The first one is team player. An easy way to show collaboration is by attaching it to your work experiences by highlighting things that you did with others. For instance, we have this task worked on data analytics projects for clients in different industries. This could be rewarded into worked with a 10-man team or worked with a team of three on data analytics engagements for clients in different industries. Let's just go ahead and write that. So you can say something like, worked with a team of three on data analytics. Okay, analytics projects. Oh, sorry, engagements. <laughs> engagements. Uh, for clients in different industries. Then we have good communication and presentation skills. This could be something like maybe you made some big presentation that you'd want to highlight in your work experience. 
maybe it was um, after months of research you found this groundbreaking solution that you presented to the board and it had this great impact or maybe it could be something in other activities like maybe you presented at a conference and then you you know you explain what the conference was about and what your presentation was about or maybe you moderated a panel discussion or maybe um maybe you wrote some some groundbreaking paper <laughs> groundbreaking paper and got published communication comes in very many forms it could be in writing in speech so yeah also um if you really do have good communication skills there's no point of listing it here because your cv should communicate it if you have to write it down then you really don't have good communication skills the last one here is leader so leadership could be something like maybe you are the head head of this department maybe you are the head of software the software engineering department or maybe um it could be in the education section uh it could be something like you uh you are the head of the student body student body or something else in the activity section maybe you you lead some non-profits non-profits organization or maybe you could even reward certain um tasks like for example this one automated the, the task xyz blah 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 this could be changed into something like um championed championed the automation efforts of task xyz or you could use the word led led the automation as you can see you have incorporated these soft skills into your cv without having to explicitly list them so you can take this out and what i would suggest putting in skills is hard skills things like um, programming languages or softwares or tools that you know how to use things that you most probably can prove using some certification that you have or some work experience that you gained etc so you could for me i could say something like um python programming language <laughs> what is spelling python have experience in so working experience in python it could be i don't know just <laughs> rpa tools like ui path uh, Microsoft need power automate power <laughs> automate so that's what should be in the skills section not soft skills tip number four proofread your CV to make sure there are no grammatical errors or any other type of errors you would be surprised by the number of people who submit CVs that have errors you would be surprised please just proofread proofread your CV use all those softwares that help you proofread things like Grammarly or even um, spell check using Word, whatever it is, proofread that thing. Send it to a friend, let them proofread it for you. You really don't want to be disqualified because of a typo. You don't. You don't, you don't want to be disqualified because of a typo. Just proofread your CV. Please. Thanks. <laughs> okay, when it comes to proofreading your CV, you have a few tools that you can use. If you're using Word, they have a spell checker, and on the newer versions of Office, the spell checker is called Editor. It has a few more capabilities, not just spell checking. To demo this, let me um, add the word really here, and then go to Review, Editor. And as you can see, I have two spelling errors and one conciseness error, and it checks for a few other things. So for spelling, um, of course, when you hover, like it gives you suggestions for what it thinks it should be. Sometimes it's wrong because maybe it's the, a name of a product and that's just the way it's called. Conciseness, um, when you hover on this, 
it, it tells you to be more concise in your language and makes it clearer so it can highlight when you're using too many words which is nice for a cv because a cv should be precise other tools you can use off the top of my head there's one called grammarly i will leave the link in the description box together with the links of everything else mentioned in this video um, you could also just proofread it yourself or send it to a friend to proofread it for you and that also works tip number five create a new version of your cv for every job application that you send out you want your cv to be responding directly to the job description in that job ad that you're responding to you want to make sure you highlight the correct and relevant work experiences the correct and relevant education um, education that you have the correct and relevant skills this can be done by reordering the, the things that you highlight let me just show you an example i don't even know i'm trying to explain in words and i can demonstrate this practically let's do a practical example <laughs> creating a new version of your cv for each job that you're applying to can be done by highlighting the relevant work experience or education or skills maybe changing up the order or the description to make sure that your cv is targeting that job profile in particular and very really directly i'll give an example for instance let's say i am applying for a data analytics role um, and this is my cv let me show you a few things that i could tweak on this cv to make this particular cv geared towards a data analytics role the first thing i can do is as you can see in this work experience section the task that has data analytics comes second and since the role i'm applying to is data analytics i'm going to move this to the top that way it's the first thing they see when they read this section the next thing i'd want to do is embellish this first task a bit because as you can see the second one um, has been quantified and has impact i could say something like worked with a team of three to create say a high level dashboard for managers in the banking industry that surfaces insights on some kpis and raises alerts against some thresholds making monitoring critical kpis a one-click job that way i have explained what are these data analytics engagements and which different industries am i referring to so let me go ahead and change this to what i just said so now i have described which data analytics task it is i was doing and for which industry it was and what impact i had with that task and at the same time there's the whole teamwork thing at the very beginning something else i could change is the skills section and use this to highlight data analytics skills for example maybe um, in terms of language i might want to say working experience in r and python because r is used a lot in data analytics i might say something like um Maybe I have experience with Power BI. Again, not sponsored by Microsoft. <laughs> Maybe Excel as well. Again, not sponsored by Microsoft. <laughs> or any other skill that you think is relevant. Something else I might do, especially if I'm a recent graduate and I don't have that vast of a work experience, would be to highlight coursework that's relevant to that job in this section. So in this case for data analytics, I might say something like um, coursework included big data analytics, uh, maybe machine learning, etc. <laughs> so these are like a few ways you can play around with your CV to make sure that each time you send it out for a job, it's targeting that particular job profile. Tip number six, run your CV through a CV parser. A CV parser is a computer program that uses AI 
to extract keywords, key phrases, and other semantic information like your name and contact information from your CV, and then ranks your CV based on those keywords and phrases, and how how well those keywords and phrases from your CV match the keywords and phrases from the job profile. So what do I mean by all that? Let's say, for instance, the job profile um, states that it wants someone with three years of experience in this industry. They want you to have a bachelor's degree in some field and maybe a master's is a, is a bonus. You know, really, they, they say master's is, is an added advantage. <laughs> and they want someone's leadership skills, someone who's a, a collaborator. So this CV passer will go through your CV and begin looking for these things. It will look for work experience, something that looks like work experience, and then the dates and try to figure out how long have you worked and then give you a score. Do you meet the minimum work experience? If it's education, it will try find anything in your CV that says bachelor's degree or associate's degree or master's degree or diploma in or certificate in. You know, like those keywords that are related to education, it will try and find all those keywords and then extract those and then rank you based on what it finds in the CV and what the profile says. If it's leadership, it will try and find whether you, you if there's anywhere in your CV that you're a manager or you are, I don't know, the head of something. <laughs> leadership, manager, head, etc. If it's collaboration, it will look for things like team or you get my point. Let me just show you an example <laughs> as I go through um, examples of sites that have free um, CV passes. There is Top Resume, Live Career, Resco. So let me just show you a practical example of how this works. Yeah, let's do that. So to demo the free CV passes that I have mentioned, I'm going to save this CV that we have and then upload it onto the site. Uh, quick disclaimer, I am sure it's going to do poorly because I haven't fleshed out all the sections that are required. For example, um, our profile section is just dummy text. Our work experience has both jobs referring to the same tasks. Our education section is very um, scarce. The skills section, I have this skills here that are still dummy text. <laughs> And uh, activities, I didn't really put effort into fleshing them out. So I'm sure it's going to do poorly, but it will help us to get the main gist of what CV passers do in the background. The sites that I'll go over today can be found by a quick Google search for free CV review software. I'll also leave the links in the description. So the first site is called Resco and it gives you basically a bunch of keywords that it found in your CV and it's a very quick and simple way to figure out whether your CV is responding directly to the job description. So let's go ahead and upload our CV and see what it says. Ah, C minus, not too bad. I thought, it would be, <laughs> I thought it would be worse. Let's see the report. It says we earned this much money. Not sure how accurate that is. Uh, top tips that your resume is too short. I completely agree. We didn't flesh out all the sections and you can see a few other scores here. In terms of jobs, it says the main industry is computer and internet, which is correct because I did put software engineering and data analytics in there. That seems about right. In charts, as you can see, uh, we have things like Python, the team, um, creating things, non-profit. Um, HTML, CSS, etc. And you can see all these keywords on a scale of general to specific, low demand to high demand. So you want to make sure what you're seeing in this graph is a close match to the keywords in the job description. If not, go back and rework it. That's it for this one. Let's move on to the next one. Resume worded. Let's upload our CV. Jane Doe. Let's see what this box say. Aha, 32 of our 100. <laughs> oh well, our impact seems to be quite high, 73. Anyway, so I like this one because, um, for instance, if we go to skills and say communication skills, it highlights all the sections that it thinks communication skills are being um communicated 
<laughs> for example um, it says this bullet point that demonstrates communication skills so you can see there's a few sections that demonstrate communication skills ex- according to this parser um let's see resume length your resume is too short uh too few bullets found uh filler words repetition of course i've repeated a lot of things like list 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 <laughs> but you get the point some things maybe for the pro version where you have to pay because i guess they have to make money somehow but it's just nice to sort of go in and figure out what interesting things you can find so this one says that for sections add essential sections so it's only found experience and education it says i should add my email so it has not found an email in here it's a nice way to figure out that the correct things are being picked up if not you need to go back and edit and then finally we have this one top resume this is more of a consulting type of site but it's free so you get like a free consult when you upload your cv which you are going to do they ask you for your email and then they respond in like 48 hours the very in-depth analysis of your cv so if you if that's something you're willing to do yeah it's, it's nice to figure out what a critic would say about your cv and then you can tweak it to improve okay guys here's a quick recap of everything that we've covered in this video tip number one know what a good cv looks like in your industry this will help you pick the correct template for your cv tip number two quantify and highlight impact don't just go ahead and list tasks in the work experience section no quantify and highlight impact tip number three demonstrate soft skills using practical experience again don't just have a skills section in your cv where you list out soft skills like communication leadership team player etc no incorporate these skills throughout your cv using practical experiences and then let them shine through the cv tip number four proofread your cv you do not want to be disqualified because of a typo or another error that could be simply caught by proofreading so proofread your cv tip number five create a new cv for every job that you apply for this will make sure that you're responding directly to the job profile in the job ad that you're responding to so create a new cv for every job that you apply for and finally tip number six run your cv through a cv pasta you want to make sure the template that you picked can be easily detectable and passed by these softwares and that the skills and, and experiences that you put in your cv are a close match for the job profile that you're applying for yeah those are my six tips on how to have a good cv i hope they were helpful if you found all this helpful please smash the like button share it with a friend leave your own tips in the comment section below yeah and thank you for watching guys that's it from me till next time bye